Okay, we are live on YouTube. Great to see everybody who is here uh, joining us today. I appreciate you being here. Uh, we've got Tony Pellegrini leading the charge. And so we'll turn the time over to him. Thanks, Tony. Thank you so much, Clint. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your participation engagement today. Uh, there will be some opportunities for you to participate and to speak up. So get, you, you know, go ahead. I think you, most of you are muted already, but get ready to unmute because I'll have some questions for you that I'd like your perspectives and observations on. First, I want to say that you know, I've, I, I'm only reviewing student work the, the students that are in my class, but oh my goodness, just absolutely uh, impressed with your perspectives, your observations, the commitment that you have, your conversations uh, through the discussion board and, and the papers are, are very, uh, very, very well crafted, very clear, articulate. Uh, and I see nods from the other uh, faculty. Um, uh, it has just really been a joy and I can see the leadership uh, in you uh, and with technology through uh, what you're sharing. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Clint's given me power here to share my screen. Give me just a second to just share my screen with you and we will uh, take you into class. So hopefully you've had, uh, you can get uh, you can get into class. We'll, there will be a recording of this uh, posted after, Clint's really good about that. Um, if you'll click here uh, and you wanna follow uh, along on your own computer, you're certainly welcome to click on week seven. And within the seminar, I put the uh, slides that we are going to be uh, kind of following through today as we go, as we go through those. And so uh, I'll be kind of following those and, and taking off from there. Uh, this week, I wanted to start with, uh, there's, uh, with, with what, uh, we would like to have you accomplish. Please uh, read over chapter six, building your connected learning community. Um, I, I know you are a part of uh, a, a professional learning uh, community uh, there in your school, whether you're at, at a grade level, uh, at the elementary level, whether you're at a content area, um, professional learning community at high school, you're connecting with peers, with those that you are uh, close to and um, uh, working closely with. And so we, this, this week, uh, we really are encouraging you and going to provide you some opportunities to be able to branch out a little uh, from that, uh, the, uh, to, to make sure that you have the opportunity to reach beyond with the wonderful tools that we have uh, at our fingers and disposal now, to be able to go beyond our, our classroom, our school, and our, our, our own local community, reach out to um, to learn from others all over the world. Uh, please remember uh, with our discussions to post by Sunday your video reflection or your enhanced discussion post. Uh, again, I've really appreciated those. I've uh, appreciated hearing your voice, seeing your faces, um, uh, hearing the, uh, the, the passion that you have for learning and for your learners. It's been a, it's been a, a, a real blessing to me. And then with this week's assignment, uh, please remember no more than two pages, double-spaced, uh, due by this next Wednesday at 11.59. Um, and everyone, at least in my class, has been very, very good with that, and I appreciate that, but just want to make sure that you're comfortable with that and, and you're moving ahead with that. Kind of a line, uh, a line uh, the, the quote that we have today, this week to start with, and kind of is an overarching umbrella for what we're going to be talking about, is uh, this quote about uh, teachers and the most valuable resource that we have as teachers is to have one another. Without collaboration, our growth is limited to our own perspectives. Without Clint, without Carol, without Brandon, without um, uh all, all of those that participate and engage uh, in this class with me, uh, I'm learning constantly. You heard me just a few moments ago say, Clint, I'll call you next week and we will uh, get something. Uh, we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, collaborating on a topic. And, 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 and so it's important, yes, that you have those um, uh, connections there at your school, 
but beyond is where we want to talk about uh, where we want to talk about going today. And so hopefully you've had a chance at least to skim over chapter six and building your connected learning community. And we're also going to talk about uh, some of the future ready uh, frameworks uh, associated with professional learning. And they kind of go hand in hand uh, and we'll address those uh, today as we go through that. So how do I go about building my professional learning community? This is one of the moments where I'd like you to unmute your microphone and talk to me about where do you go for information? When you need something, where do you go for information? I'm going to be quiet here. Speak up. I'll jump in. Um, Brandon and I are uh, part of a group of regional trainers who uh, over the years we've met once a month as best we can as a PLC just over uh, WebEx or Zoom or whatever. Uh, and with the expansion of digital teaching and learning and, and more districts hiring, you know, trainers and coaches and things like that, our group has grown to, you know, from, from a handful to about 20, 25 people that try to get together on a monthly basis and just share what's working, what's not, what we're struggling with. Um, it's just, it's been great. That is wonderful. Thank you for being brave, Clinton, jumping in there. Uh, I think uh, the rest of you, the others that are, that are here today with us, think outside of the little box, uh, box just a little bit. It doesn't have to be associated with technology. How do you? I just go, I go online and I look for different lesson plans that teachers have already put out there. And I teach large groups. And so I have to, I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I do, once I get them, I have to make those and modify them so they will meet the large groups of students that I teach. But I don't want to have to make every lesson plan by myself. So I go and I search them. I'm also a member of a, uh, for, of a physical education community as well, where we share ideas back and forth, especially for the large group activities, because those are sometimes hard to find and incorporate and implement into the school setting. So that's what I do. David, thanks for being brave and thanks for speaking up. You know, you made me think about too, um, uh, we have our own unique personalities. Yes, you take those lesson plans from where you are and where you found those, uh, but they may not be, uh, the, like you'd mentioned, they may be for smaller groups and you need to adjust them to, to larger groups. But by uh, looking at um, uh, putting your person in the personality into it. You really can connect with your learners. Please, Mr. Loveland, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, it's just funny. Um, I, uh, I, I will echo that. I do a lot of my, uh, a lot of things I look online. I teach online. And so I really have a very tight, small group to pull from. Um, but I stay in contact with some of, my, uh, some of the teachers I've worked with in the past. Uh, we send text messages and such of that. But I do a lot. I do search a lot of things online. And, and that searching is great. Uh, and let me put you on the spot just a bit, little bit, Mr. Loveland. Did yeah, you sure. ever, as you get out there and search around and, and look for some things, uh, did you ever kind of go down a rabbit hole like Alice? Uh, was there, have you ever found something that maybe took you out, not where you expected to be? Um, I, <laughs> I know early on in my career, I actually got called into my principal's office uh, because uh, my searches were were being flagged by the district. Um, I was looking up stuff on Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and I kept getting the, this is like my first year teaching, so I kept getting the alert. And I go, I don't know, figure this out. So my principal calls me in and says, oh, what's going on here? And I can figure it out. And it's because the, uh, and this was, you know, previous discussions had about, talked about uh, internet and how we get blocked sometimes. And it was my searches, looking at Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, at a place who was part of the gang, she was a prostitute and a teacher. So that's funny. Um, but the uh, only thing I can think of is it was hitting those words and getting blocked by the district, even, you know, even though it was a legitimate search and mm -hmm. I was trying to get information on the, the people in the group, but I was having such a hard time because of some of the phrases or terms used in on the sites. And all of us have similar, similar stories to, to tell uh, about some of that goofiness. Um, one of the things that I wanted you to look at with this uh, particular uh, image here in front of you, uh, about four o'clock or five o'clock with blogs and wikis. 
um, uh, hopefully, as some of you do uh, go out to uh, to to search for what people are saying uh, in in their blogs, what people are uh, adding to or, or asking you to add to within their wikis. And uh, one of the things, it, it's a great way to expand your understanding, expand your uh, perspective of what's going on out there within the content areas that you're teaching. But uh, but two. Um, uh, you, you do have to do some homework associated with those. Uh, in the text, it reminded us to, to make sure that we uh, check some of the credentials and some of the, the um, do some uh, uh, checks on those that are uh, crafting and creating these so that we get, um, uh, so that we get a, uh, uh, a true picture of what's going on. Um, Oh, and shoot, I'm gonna, I, I just, I have to share this one story. Uh, Alan November, a, a technology specialist, tells the story of oh, a teaching, I can't remember the student's name, I apologize if one of the others of you remember this, teaching Josh or John to think. And so uh, Alan was in the seventh, it was in teaching middle school at one point, and a student came up to him and said, um, uh, yes, I'm going to do my report on uh, how um, the, the, the Holocaust didn't occur. And Alan looked at him and said, you know, what's up with that? Give me some more information. Where are you hearing about this? Well, Dr. So-and-so from Rutgers, and this is not the real universe, but, but from Rutgers University, this, this whole web page about um, uh, uh, how the Holocaust never occurred. And uh, I'm going to use that as, a, as my perspective and what I'm going to share. And uh, so uh, Alan did a little bit of study and research. And yes, it was Dr. So-and-so from Rutgers University, but Dr. So-and-so uh, in charge of um, chemistry at Rutgers University. Nothing associated with uh, history or sociology. He had certain beliefs and certain uh, perspectives and shared certain information. Uh, totally false, to totally spurious. And um, uh, I, I think it was Josh, teaching Josh to think. Um, uh, Josh, uh, luckily for, for Josh, he, he uh, listened to Dr. November and, and was able to find uh, correct information. But we have to be careful about some of those, uh, some of the approaches that we take in the, in, in the places that we go. So um, it, it's very appropriate to do a little bit of uh, background checking to make sure that you do have um, the, 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 the right story. The, uh, all of these red links here, I'm not going to take you to, to these, but all of these uh, are links that I'd encourage you to at least skim over and uh, to, to talk about um, uh, the benefits of a professional learning network, larger than just your school, larger than just your district, uh, what those are, how to create a community. And you heard uh, even from those that uh, shared today, you know, I have a small group that I work with. I know those individuals. We, we talk and we work and we engage together. You heard Clint share about his group, although it's growing larger and larger. It's still, uh, we know he knows those people and he knows where they're coming from and, and what they're trying to do. And then I like this link as well here at the very bottom, this personalized professional development. Um, uh, uh, um, often, uh, you know, we're asked by our school principal or our district, you know, what, what professional development opportunities uh, do you need, should you uh, have available to us as a school? And uh, hopefully those are led by data. Uh, data usually uh, wins every discussion, uh, but using that data, using data to be able to determine or decide as a school, where do we need to focus our very limited professional development dollars? And uh, by doing that, um, that's absolutely a good approach, but you ought to have in your own back pocket a, a, a personalized professional development plan, what you want to learn, what interests you, where is your passion, and, and what is going to provide uh, you um, by having that passion in a particular topic, that is going to provide you the the impetus to, to study and learn and grow and develop and, and to become and to be that lifelong learner. So one of, the, one of the tools that I wanted to share with you today uh, in order to do that or to reach out uh, is and uh, to, um, to address how Twitter could be a benefit to educators. We are gonna get uh, to our uh, discussion posts this week, our assignments, 
and, and one of them will be to reach out uh, via Twitter. And so it, it, these uh, bullet points here do apply not just to Twitter, but to all really social media uh, uh, avenues. Uh, we, uh, just as you heard here today from those that commented, uh, when I wanted to learn something, I went out there and I did a search or I did, uh, I visited with my peers. And so that is a great example of just in time learning. When the, uh, when the um, need to learn comes, the teacher will appear. And whether that's a face-to-face -face teacher or whether that's a, uh, a, a, a digital or a, vi uh, a virtual experience, it, it is available. Uh, the, the internet is a wonderful resource for us to 24 seven be able to acquire the information that we need in that particular moment. Um, uh, again, uh, Twitter is one way to, to go about doing that using the digital content associated with Twitter. It allows you to provide links and resources, articles. It, it gets you out of isolation a little bit. Uh, I haven't really heard, uh, you know, in this class, uh, you're, we're, we're really pushing you to the limit to engage with one another, to engage with others. Uh, I don't see a lot of isolated individuals here, but uh, they're, uh, they, particularly this last year, has been a very, very isolated year for all of us as classroom teachers and as, um, as parents and educators. Um, uh, it's a way of using Twitter to, to uh, connect with experts. Again, you have to do some checking to make sure that you're getting uh, what you really are looking for. And then the concept of collectively, we're really smarter uh, together than we are um, uh, individually. So it's a, 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 a wonderful way to be able to look at how other people are seeing um, their world, the world around us. So, um, uh, Want to take a couple of minutes here and talk, or to address the, the power of Twitter and how to use Twitter and, and the hashtags associated with that that uh, you use not only in Twitter but in Instagram and other uh, tools as well. So um, what I've provided to you here is just a little a flow chart um, of you know should you use Twitter uh, and why you should use Twitter. Here are the links on the left are. Um, uh, links that uh, uh, you can click on to uh, uh, follow uh, different educators that have accounts on Twitter and uh, may be uh, supportive or helpful of the, the concepts that you're learning or want to uh, engage with. And so these links are wonderful ways or wonderful places for you to go as well to be able to uh, connect with and engage with others uh, through the use of, of Twitter. Uh, with our uh, chapter six in our text, uh, in building this connected learning community, it really is based on the foundation of, of looking to these uh, online uh, tools, these virtual tools like Twitter, to develop and engage and increase our professional learning network beyond um, uh, beyond where we are right now. So uh, just a couple of questions. This is another place for you to, to jump in here. Um, uh, for those of you that have had some experience with Twitter, what role does Twitter play in building your professional learning network? Those of you that do have a Twitter account and do engage with Twitter, how do you use that? What do you use that for? Can we get anyone to speak up on that? Yeah, I will. Um, I started uh, participating in Twitter um, a little over a year ago, and um, I just participated in various chats that I saw that were uh, available, and um, I enjoyed reading what other people had to say. I, I mean, there are people from all across the country, so perspectives from all across the country that are really um, interesting to see. And um, there's like a chat for everybody. So, you know, you can, there's lists of chats on Google that you can access and some of them are gone. Some of them have, have expired, but a lot of them are still active and you can jump on and, 
and participate. And uh, you get a lot of followers that way. People are interested in, you know, following you and you can follow people that are on there and then you get to see their tweets. So yeah, I, I think it's a really helpful tool and um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. James, thank you so very much for sharing. I'm sure appreciative of that. And I think, you know, as I, you know, heard, or as I listen to you and, and engage with you, um, uh, really, the, uh, there's no limit to the topics that we'd like to learn about and, and what we'd like to acquire, the learning that we'd like to acquire through the use of, uh, of Twitter to engage and, and uh, with others and connect with others that have similar interests, similar goals with us. And um, uh, I, I do just appreciate your, you sharing that experience and setting up your Twitter and following people uh, associated with it. it uh, I think our, our, our biggest advocate and our um, uh, one of our greatest examples is Sid Dixon, our state superintendent. She's got a great uh, Twitter presence. And whenever she's out doing something and engaging, you know, engaging with learners, she's posting uh, 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 her perspective, her observations associated with what's happening in education right now. Uh, and so she may be one that you'd like to follow as well. But what, uh, as you uh, post your video and you, as you work towards um, uh, uh, posting the discussion prompt this week, um, uh, please take a look and, and we will get a, go into that here in just a moment. Please uh, work with and expand your use of Twitter as you move through to that. Just a couple of, and this is from, uh, uh, Karina's uh, uh, white sites from last year, so it's not this week, but this you are Utah chat, it, what I thought was a one uh, good uh, Twitter account to to uh, align to or to to work with. Um, uh, uh, and so let me let me pause for just a second because I do want to go into let me come into our week seven and let's look at the syllabus for this week, give me just a moment. Here we go. And take just a moment to go over the activities for, for this week. So building your connected, uh, connected learning. We've talked uh, a lot about how to do that, but I do want you to create your own Twitter account, follow at least 10 people. I've given you Twitter accounts of those uh, here in our class. They're given to you again before the end of the letter teachers, uh, given to you before the end. But take a look at the information that we've shared with you in um, uh, 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 the chapter six and decide who you're going to follow. Uh, Clint, can I pick on you for just a moment to talk a little about Twitter in a nutshell? Is that okay? Would you have a moment or two to give us some background? All that uh, Prezi? Sure. Yep. <laughs> Do you want to click on it and show Absolutely. It? <laughs> Here we go. Yes, I do. Thank you. I made it a few years ago, but it's still, I think it's still kind of prevalent. So just hit play up there in the upper right. Give me just a second to move my pictures around. Let's see. Get started? No, nope, just down a little bit about seven o'clock from there. Seven o'clock. Nope. From get started. It says play on just in the card in the upper right, just below the get started. I apologize. Please forgive no, no me. Worries. Thanks so much. No worries. And then uh, just hit the play arrow. There we go. So, uh, and you can skip the video. <laughs> the video is cute though. Uh, but, you know, basically Twitter started off as a, a place to kind of just share what you're doing, like a micro blog is what it started off as. Uh, and then just hit the next button. You bet. Past the video. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, what's the big deal about Twitter? Um, Basically, you know, take some time to go through it. It's worth it. Um, but instead of, you know, tweeting about what you had for breakfast or, you know, what, you know, what the latest thing happened on The Bachelor or stuff like that, um, I pretty much only use Twitter uh, for professional, for school, for educational stuff. Uh, and so, I mean, at least with my, with the Twitter account that I've shared with you in this class, I may have or five or six different Twitter handles, but uh my SEDC Clinton one is, is purely educational. Uh, and so the things that I do there, I tweet things that, you know, that we're doing, that we're doing at the service center, great things that I run across, uh, other, you know, people that are sharing great things, but, but it's all about just kind of taking some time and curating who you follow and, you know, kind of 
take a look at maybe some of your instructors accounts. And then once you're in there, you can see who we follow and look at some of their tweets. And if they're saying smart things, follow them. If they're, you know, posting garbage, then don't follow them. And so your experience in Twitter is what you make of it. You're not, you know, you don't have to, you know, follow, you know, all the latest gossip and stuff like that. If you just, you know, focus in on teachers and educators and, and topics that are of interest to you, then Twitter can be a really rich uh, community and, and resource for any time, anywhere learning for you. So thank you, you so in, much. You get out what you, what you put into it. Basically. Uh, uh, like, like most things, huh? That's right. Like most things. Absolutely. Thank you if so very if much. If you're totally new to Twitter, take four minutes and go through that little Prezi. It's, it's informative, I hope. So wonderful. Thank you so much. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, as you look at this, this is, uh, uh, what we'll have you do for your discussion. Let me pause here for a second. Any, does this create any heartburn, concern, question from any of you? Is this something that you feel comfortable with that you can do? I'm seeing thumbs up in here and I'll keep it here nothing. So I'm assuming it's gonna be okay. Let me go back if I could give you just a moment to a future ready framework in our professional learning with assignment number seven as we get, take a look and go into assignment number seven uh, that you're going to have this year, or this week, excuse me. Uh, yes, take a look at the, the overview and the gear six uh, self-assessment. But as you, I, I was really touched by these elements and, and wanted to encourage you uh, to, to take a look at these bullet points as you, as you create your two pages. Um, uh, yes, district-sponsored uh, professional learning skills engages your, st your staff, and, and sh there should be a lot of leadership from your district. But I really uh, liked, uh, starting with element two, what indicators are usually included in your professional goals? Uh, are they aligned with what the district is having? Uh, does that meet or does that engage or align with your annual evaluation? Uh, when I was a principal down in Washington County. Um, I, I, at that time they had a, uh, for those that were uh, after their first three years, it's just basically a box. What goals are you going to work on? And how are you gonna work on those? And how are you gonna move forward with those? And so these professional goals of what's important to me, how am I going to improve my, my learning and my knowledge to be able to deal with and address the, the learners that I have are, are very, very helpful. Um, uh, I, I would I would hope that you would address some of element three as well and describe some of your professional learning experiences over this last year. It's been a goofy, crazy year. Uh, what are some of the components that you've learned and uh, how are you putting them into practice to help you for this next year? And so as you look at, uh, the, at, at your paper this week, uh, please focus on those. I think that would be very, very helpful for you to be able to uh, address and engage with those. And then uh, I, I know this is a very uh, just straight, but I wanted to make you aware of some of three uh, activities that are coming up um, that you may be interested in an Adobe Education Summit. summit. Uh, in July, the end of July, if that, please click on that link and, and uh, take a peek there. Uh, and, and let me pick Brandon and Clint. Uh, no, there's no more room at rural schools. Is that, that's kind of what I've heard. Is that what you're hearing? There's a wait list. Okay. We are at capacity. So if they want to okay. still register and get on the wait list. And it's always, there's always cancellations when we're trying to get people in. Um, the reason for this wait list, the uh, accommodations for uh, the food is pretty much 720. And after that, they're standing a moment to eat. So if you don't want lunch, feel free to come and stand and don't eat lunch. But uh, it's going to be a great lunch. Well, if you're, if, you're, if you're around Ridgefield, please come. Please come if you can. We'd love to have you there. And then there's an ISTE Live virtual uh, uh, this here in the next couple of weeks. Um, that we wanted to make you aware of as well, too. And then we just did want to make sure that you had our connections, our Twitter handles down here. I promised to, to share those with you one last time. Uh, please make sure that you reach out to your instructor if you have questions or concerns. Uh, yes, I feel a little bit like that lady in the commercial, help, help, I've fallen down and I can't get up. Help, help, I've started talking, I can't stop. Um, let me stop for a moment. Questions, concerns, 
heartburn with any of the assignments or activities that we have uh, available this week? I got an email today, Tony. I'm okay. sorry, go ahead, Brandon, one more I time. I got an email today about a uh, Nearpod Summer Planning Palooza. It's an online conference June 20, next week, 24th and 25th. I'll put the link here in the chat. That is, Wonderful. For those who use Nearpod at all, it's a, maybe a good opportunity to get some more Nearpod experience. And if you don't use Nearpod, you should. That's right. At least and consider it. Take a look at yeah, it. Can, yeah, consider it. Let me find it here and put it in the... Yep, please do, because I'd love to keep a copy of that too. So I'm not going to shut this down until that happens. And there's no, nothing in the chat. I, no, so. I just, yep, there's nothing there. So thank you for being with us today. I appreciate you. Um, if there's no other questions, get home to those families and get them to take care of you. And Katie, thank you so very much too for being here. And, and Brandon, I see it now. So thank you so much. Um, uh, friends, faculty, friends, any last minute things that we have? Who's next week? I believe it's Danny next week. Wonderful. Daniel's week, next week. And then the we'll, week after that, I'm posting a pre-recorded one early in the week for for the fourth. That's the week. Fantastic. I don't have anything else, friends. You hang in there and we'll see you soon. Okay.